grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Today we celebrate the feast of Corpus Christi. This is the feast of the most holy body and blood of Christ. But before we can really talk about Corpus Christi, we really need to think about and talk about how we got here. You see, two months ago, we were with the disciples and we watched them at the Last Supper when Jesus took bread, when he broke it and gave it to his disciples, when he held the chalice in his hands and he said, this is my blood which will be shed for you. As you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Two weeks ago, we celebrated the Feast of Pentecost. This is the birthday of the church. This is when the Holy Spirit descends upon the church, upon the disciples, like tongues of fire. And they are sent out to, pro to preach and to proclaim, to give life to the church. Last weekend, we celebrated the Holy Trinity. It was a chance for us to admire and reflect and worship the very nature of God himself. But today we start looking forward as well as looking back. Today we recall how God continues to be present in the world and in the church through the Eucharist, through the body and blood of Christ. And it's important that Jesus, that God continues to be present, not symbolically and not metaphorically, but really present among us. As Catholics, we believe that Christ is truly present in the wafer and in the cup, in the body and blood of Christ, in communion itself. Eucharist is a gift from God. It is broken and it is shared with all of us. The Eucharist has been called many things in, in, in uh, time. It's been called the bread of the angels. It's called food for the journey. The Eucharist, the Mass, is the source and summit of the Christian life. This is the high point of where we worship and where we are as a Catholic people and as a Catholic church. My favorite though is what the Eucharist means. It means thanksgiving. And how appropriate, how meaningful is that? I think it's even more striking now. The word thanksgiving because it's something that we haven't been able to receive for so long. For two months now, it seems, we've been separated from the Eucharist. We've been separated from that body and blood of Christ, from being able to gather in a large church, from being able to sing and worship and pray together. This has been our only alternative. And as good and as meaningful as a virtual Mass is, it's just not quite the same, is it? I remember two months ago, there was a comment on the Catholic page, uh, the Catholic Facebook page for, for JBLM. And I, I dug through it. I couldn't find it uh, in time for the sermon. But the gist of that comment has stuck with me. They said that they realized and they recognized how important Eucharist was because and, and how they had been taking it for granted, their access to the Eucharist, their access to communion. They had taken it for granted for so long. And maybe that is the one good thing that comes out of all of this coronavirus stuff. I think that's remarkable. Early in on this uh, this coronavirus pandemic, that somebody was thinking and recognizing how important it is to be able to gather together, 
how important it is to be able to receive the very body and blood of Christ. It recalls a story of a Dominican sister that served at a small town parish in West Virginia. And after Mass one morning, as the people were gathered with coffee and donuts, she sat down and she decided to engage, uh, as she normally did, in conversation with some of the folks that were gathered there. She asked this table, what did Jesus mean when he said, this is my body given up for you? And after the table goes quiet, because, you know, whenever a sister poses a question like that, the table just gets really quiet. But after a moment, a man spoke up and he said, Sister, I'm a coal miner. I go down deep into the earth and I dig for coal before the sun rises. And I come up long after the sun is set. Sister, I haven't seen the sun in months. And when I get overtime, I'm happy to spend even more time down there. Now I know that it's not a good place to be. I have lung disease. And in a few years, my body will collapse. And I'll be worn out. But sister, I mine coal so that I can put bread on the table. I mine coal so that I can send my children to school. I mine coal so that they don't have to. And when we sit down at a table and then when we eat every Sunday night, I know what Jesus meant when he said, this is my body given up for you. Jesus gave himself for us. Jesus sacrificed himself for our sake. And Jesus continues to be present with us and for us. Even as we celebrate now virtually, even as we celebrate with a, a spiritual communion, Christ is truly present. God does not abandon us. And we still are the church. Even though we celebrate a little bit differently now, we still gather together in living rooms and family rooms and offices around the world. We gather together so that we can share, so that we can celebrate, so that we can feel Christ present among us. We know that Christ continues to be present. He gave himself to us. He sacrificed himself for our sake. And he continues to walk with us in this life. And so let us pray. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O oh, good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Permit me not to be separated from you. From the wicked foe, defend me. At the hour of my death, call me and bid me come to you. That with your saints, I, might, I may praise you forever and ever. Amen. Amen.